So in this lecture, we're going to learn about the various breakdown mechanisms. Uh, the manner in which a uh, dielectric breaks down and becomes conducting depends upon the kind of insulating material it is. So the breakdown mechanisms are different in gases, different in liquids, different in uh, vacuum or in solids. Firstly, we will take a look at the various breakdown mechanisms in gaseous dielectrics. Uh, it's natural to start with gases because gases are, of course, the most simplest and the most widely used dielectrics. And as we may well understand that if I need my dielectric to, to become conducting, the first thing that I need is, of course, some ionization processes which can enable ions to be produced and when we have sufficient ions they may start to flow under the application of the electric field and result in breakdown. Breakdown will of course be different under different practical electrode systems but that is something we will discuss later. When you have zero electric field that is you do not have any electric field inside the material then the gas is governed by basic gas laws like Boyle's law and Gay-Lussac's law which tells which gives the relation between pressure temperature etc and then every gas has some amount of kinetic energy and this kinetic energy is related to the molecular velocity so if we have an average half mv square for the gas particles or the gas molecules then these molecular velocities will be related by the relation half mv square kinetic energy being equal to 3 by 2 kT, where T is the gas temperature and a measure of the energy content of the gas, A is K is the Boltzmann's constant. When I talk about molecular velocity, it is important to remember that the large number of molecules which are present in a gas in a volume will have random velocities or rather they will have a distribution of velocities rather than individual a fixed constant velocity. So if the velocities of these individual particles can be plotted as a velocity distribution as shown in this figure, on the y-axis we have velocity distribution function, on the x-axis we have the molecular relative velocities. As you can see, there is a certain peak value which is basically the idea that most of there is a maximum velocity that any particle with that, within that gaseous within those conglomeration of gas particles will have and there will be values there will be particles with having much lower values than the peak velocity but we do see that most of the particles tend to be clustered, tend to have velocities which are clustered around the peak velocity range. And as we go further away from the peak velocity, to very low values, the number of such particles reduced. And as we go to very high velocities, which differ widely from the peak velocity, again, the number of such velocities reduce. So this is basically a bell-shaped curve. And we can define what is called the molecular relative velocity. The molecular relo relative velocity Vr is given by V divided by Vp, where Vp is the most probable velocity. And of course, at the value of V equal to Vp, the relative velocity is equal to 1. This distribution can be given by this relationship. F is equal to Vr, which is equal to 4 by root pi Vr squared, exponential to the power minus Vr squared. So the idea is this, that the molecular velocities are distributed according to this particular function. As these molecules move around with their respective velocities, they will move around randomly. This is in a zero electric field situation and they will collide with each other. They will also collide with the walls of the container. The distance a particle travels between two successive collisions is called its free path. 
So for any given gas system or gas volume, we can talk about a mean free path. Remember, most of the terms, we are not interested in individual velocities or individual free paths. We are interested in the behavior of the gas as a whole. And we can talk of a mean free path, lambda bar, which is given by 1 by pi, R1 plus R2 whole square into NP. R1 and R2 are the radii of the particles involved. NP is the number of pairs of such particles which can collide with each other. So if we are considering iron molecule collision, then R1 is the radius of an iron and R2 is the radius of a molecule that we are considering. And that particular iron molecule collision is what we are bothered with. So NP is the number of such pairs. And this lambda bar, the mean free path, is equal to 1 by delta. Delta is the effective collision cross-section. So this essentially gives us an idea about the probability of a particular kind of collisions happening. That is, a particular kind of collision between a pair of particle types happening is given by the effective collision cross-section and it is related to the mean free path between these particles. Now, when I talk about conduction currents, essentially I'm talking about different kinds of particles or ions moving within the field. For an insulating gas, the conduction current can be due to movement of various kinds of charged particles. What are the various kinds of charged particles that may be present in a gas discharge and how would these charged particles be produced within the gas? So first, to have conduction of any ga gas particles, we need to have the production of these gas particles and how would these gas particles may be produced? So when I'm talking about charged particles, I'm going to talk about predominantly the three predominant kinds of particles which contribute to current density. One is, of course, the electron the lightest particle available, negative ions and a combination of electrons plus negative ions. So we might have electrons in the gas and electrons are primarily produced at the cathode surface and the processes by which uh, electrons might be produced on the cathode surface are many, photoionization, field emission, electron impact and positive ion bombardment. Electrons may also be produced due to ionization of neutral particles, in which case for every ion electron produced, a positive ion will also be produced. This kind of electron and positive ion production takes place within the medium of the gas and the processes that might be involved are thermal ionization, photoionization, and impact ionization. Apart from positive ions, we might also have negative ions produced in the gas, and this would be either through attachment or through ion prayer production. So these are the various kinds of charged particles which might be produced in an insulating material and may contribute to the conduction currents. Next, we shall see uh, what are these processes that we are talking about.